Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. Today, get your 3D printing hats on, or maybe your 3D printed hat, because we're gonna do some 3D printing. We're gonna design a motor mount for this motor right here, this little 1806 motor. If you are into 3D printing, especially if you've just gotten into 3D printing, this is going to be the video for you. And hey, Adam from the editing booth right here, I realized that I've jam packed so much useful information that this cannot be one video. So this, this will be part one of a four part series. In this video, we're gonna cover sketching our design and then we'll move into Tinkercad in the next video. I did a video a while back, a 3D printing crash course for beginners, and that seemed to have picked up uh, a lot of interest as of late. This video will be kind of the next step. So once you, maybe you're, you're kind of, you're ready to take on 3D printing, and in this case, designing an item to be 3D printed. What I'm gonna do in this video is kind of walk you through basically every single step that I would do to, to go from an idea in my brain to a drawing, and then we're gonna go into Tinkercad and we're gonna make it on Tinkercad, which is the online software that I talked about in the, pre the previous video. And then we're going to slice it in Cura and then we're going to print it on the Ender 3 back there. This would be kind of like if you uh, were my friend and I said, hey, come on over and I'll show you, like we'll go through the whole process of 3D printing. So uh, if you like that, stick around and with a little bit of editing magic, uh, you will get to see a sneak peek of the finished product and the process, but I haven't done any of that yet, so don't tell me how it turns out. Let's get started. All right, so we've got our paper right here. We have our motor that we actually need to make the mount for. I have a pen. You'll probably want to use a pencil, but I'm using this Sharpie pen just so it's easier for you guys to see. I'm going to be using this caliper, this digital caliper, which is just super great for getting a really precise number uh, it's 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 very nice and today we will be working in millimeters because that is probably the most common measurement with 3d printing and it's just such an easier uh, thing to do than fractions but you could absolutely use a ruler as well and in this case fortunately we really don't need that many dimensions we can kind of make it however we want the only thing that we really need to measure correctly are these mounting holes on the motor right here. And so let's, let's measure those and see what they are. And also, you could also pull up the specs of this motor uh, and to get those measurements. Usually you can find those. Um, but in this case, we'll just measure this because we're just kind of doing this as a practice anyway. So it looks like, uh, I mean, I would dare say almost eh, probably 11.5, probably 11.5 millimeters is what that's looking like to me from uh, from side to side. But notice that these two holes, the, the the opposite on the opposite sides, are not the same. So these these two holes are closer. These are uh, 11.5, and these two are wider. It looks like 15.5. That should be that should be close enough. Again, this is not we're not doing surgery here or anything like that. So uh, let's draw a view. What we need to do is basically have what I'm imagining. Uh, so let's say from a side view, we're basically gonna have like a triangle. Uh, so we'll have this part where the motor goes. We'll draw this sort of to scale, I guess. Uh, and then we'll have this flat bottom part. And this is the part that we will actually glue to the uh, aircraft. And then we need to have supports so that this thing doesn't just like snap in half. So what we'll do is we will draw, uh, or I mean, well, well, we will create basically a triangle. So we'll have a triangle going from there. And we, you could do this in like all kinds of ways. It could be, it doesn't have to be this type of triangle or whatever, but this is what the side view is going to look like. So we're going to have a 90 degree uh, section right here uh, from, from the, the front of the mount and then the base of the mount. And then we're going to have this angle that's going to be sort of the support angle. So that's basically the side view of what it's going to look like. Now, as far as this front, the, the actual part where the motor attaches to, what, we're, what that's going to be is basically just a rectangle or a, uh, well, it could be a square or whatever. So I'm gonna draw this. I don't know if this will necessarily be to scale, uh, but basically it's going to sit. Uh, it's going to sit on the front of there, just like that. You will just, uh, let's just sort of draw the outline of the motor onto here to give us an idea. So I know it's kind of weird what we're doing. We're sort of drawing to scale, but sort of not. But we're basically going to 
have it like that. So that's that's probably, that's pretty good. It's probably a little large. We could make it smaller. Uh, so let's see if we get our ruler here. So we're looking at, that's right about 40 millimeters right there. Could probably get away with 30. Let's do 30. So let's just make it simple. Let's say, let's say that this front piece is actually going to be a 30 by 30 square. So just, you know, very roughly here. So we'll say this is going to be actually 30 by 30. And again, this doesn't actually, we're just sketching this out basically. So it doesn't actually matter that it's, uh, that it's uh, an actual square or, you know, that the angles are correct. We're trying to, what we're doing right now is getting a reference, a making a, essentially a quick reference for later on. So all of these are 30. Now, another thing to keep in mind about this and with any kind of, whatever you're designing for, you wanna keep in mind some of the factors that you're gonna to have to deal with. In this case, we have the motor wires. And so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I think what I'll do is run these is uh, because we're gonna to have to connect these to an ESC. I mean, on a, if we were gonna actually gonna install this, we'd need to connect it to an ESC. So if this is the top, we'll put an arrow saying this way is sort of up. So what I think I'd do is actually make a little, make a little cutout, like a little notch right here so that the motor wires uh, can sort of sit inside, sort of like flush with this, with this sort of line of the motor mount. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when we start designing it. So what that means is we need to, if, if I'm going to have it on this side, again, we're, we're looking at the motor mount, then what I'm going to want to do is make sure that the holes, uh, in this case, the, the shorter holes, or the, the closer holes are uh, in a vertical format. If the wider holes, let's say these ones are, let's just say they're, they're this wide. It doesn't actually matter uh, the actual the actual width, but let's say these ones are wider. I guess I kind of messed that up, but again, it doesn't matter. Uh, either they're going to be, these motor wires, wires will be up at this corner, or if we do a full rotation, they will be down at the other corner, uh, at the bottom corner. So in any case, either way you do it, the motor wires are gonna stick up um, at one of the corners if we do this sort of horizontal and vertical uh, format for the mounting holes. I hope that's not too confusing, but I'm just saying that because that is one thing to keep in mind because of the way the motor wires come out. All right, now the most important part is just to dimension the actual holes. That just means we're going to say how far apart they are. Uh, and the, well, not, I should say the distance between the holes, we're about to dimension the actual holes. So let's say 15 and a half millimeters. And so the, the distance between these two right here, these longer ones, we're going to say that this is 15.5. By the way, if I accidentally say centimeters instead of millimeters, I probably mean millimeters. And then these ones that are closer, as we, as we concluded, they are 11, we'll say 11.5 from, from here to right here. These guys are 11.5 and that's gonna be helpful. So now we pretty much have all the dimensions that we need. Uh, we have basically a 30 by 30 square and then we have the dimensions for the holes, uh, the whole distance and these particular holes uh, these ones, the actual diameter of the holes, I believe these are two millimeter. It looks like two millimeter. Yeah, these use two millimeter or M2 screws. Now, one thing to keep in mind is usually the holes end up a little bit smaller in the actual 3D printed object than they than they are in the model. So we will probably want to want to size those up a little bit, but not too much, because uh, it's always easier to you know drill out the hole as opposed to make the hole smaller. And in this case, you'd probably wanna use washers anyway. Um, but let's, let's do that. So let's say the holes themselves probably should be about two millimeters, maybe, maybe 2.5. So we'll say that the actual hole diameter, just for reference uh, across there, is uh, 2.5. Cool, so we can basically, well, we can kind of cross that out because we don't really need that anymore. The other thing is we need to make a hole for the motor shaft and the little retainer clip that goes on there. So that will be in the very center. And let's make that, we'll say that is like uh, six millimeters in diameter. 
Now we have our basic sketch, we have our dimensions, and we have a basic idea of what we want to do. Let's jump on over to Tinkercad and get started on building this. Boom, here we are in Tinkercad. So we're gonna jump on in here. All right, thanks for joining me, everybody. We're gonna keep this party going. In the next video, we're gonna jump into Tinkercad that should be showing up on your screen somewhere, or it will be linked in the description below. I will see you over there.